I just got one of these RDX drives and they're from Imation, uh, well this particular one is from Imation, a whole bunch of other companies have branded it uh, such as HP and Tanberg, whatever. Uh, this particular one is an external USB 3 uh, drive with uh, a 500 gig cartridge and yeah it comes with some retrospect software on it weirdly enough there's no requirements written on it that I can see but the general idea is that this is a backup solution where you plug in the drive and you can start backing up all your software to cartridges they range up to two terabytes there's also SSD versions and originally I thought these were some kind of actual disk mechanism where it was like a jazz drive or one of the older SyQuest drives where it actually has read heads in the device and then the cartridge gets loaded in and the read heads extend into the cartridge to begin reading the data because this is actually a hard disk based cartridge so I thought they had developed some system but uh, as we'll see later uh, I don't know if I can get the cartridge apart I don't know if it has screws but uh, the cartridges are actually a normal two and a half inch hard drive <laughs> just in a rugged plastic case so I don't know this thing kind of feels like a scam I mean you're just selling a serial ATA hard drive in a special case uh, I don't know I'm not I'm not entirely convinced on this thing but I thought it would be kind of neat to take a look at it nonetheless hi Moose What's up? You cleaning? Yeah. Alright, we've got some software. It just says version 1. Point something? 1.0? 1. 1.57. 1. Setup guide, warranty information, this is the cartridge, my box is kind of disintegrating, the cartridge, 500 gig, and you can see it's got a serial ATA connector, I wonder if we can just plug this into just a normal controller, oh, we'll get to that, I'm sure we can since it's just a hard drive, USB 3 cable, well, decent length one, it's one of the uh, Gigantor USB 3 type B connectors power adapter with the international plugs 12 volt actually UL listed and this is a nice design so you can hook up one of the wires like just a straight wire I have one on the table here somewhere but you can hook up just a weight a uh, straight wire if you want to just have a long cable running to it or you can take off this piece and you can see there's actually a little uh, connection to the socket and it gives you a wall style one that's actually one of the more clever designs I've seen uh, usually they just have these they don't have the ability to use a regular cable I like that I just checked the software and it's Windows only no surprise uh, this thing supposedly supports Linux, but I don't know about Mac OS. It probably just registers as a USB device. Here's the drive. Attention, please install the RDX utility CD before use. Yeah, I don't think so. Huh, okay, so there, I can see some mechanical elements in there. So that it does physically eject the cartridge. And we got rubber along the sides, USB docking station, animation, 12 volt 1 amp, looks like a 40 millimeter fan, USB 3 and just the power, this looks like a locking tab for the Kingston locks. So let's get this thing plugged in and see if anything shows up in macOS. I haven't switched to Windows yet despite wanting to. Wow. Well, oh, so much want to use to use Windows, it's just kinda where things have headed. 
uh, main thing holding me back is just how goddamn awful Adobe software is. I seriously hate Lightroom and uh, what's the other thing I'm using? Oh, Premiere. Uh, I just can't bring myself to use them. Premiere uh, I think is the easier of the two. Lightroom is so unbelievably slow. I mean, I've been using Aperture and, and uh, Final Cut Pro and just, holy crap. Lightroom is like, it feels like it's a hundred years old. Uh, well, one day I'll switch. Uh, okay, we got a green light. Fill the fan. I guess it's smart enough to keep powered off until you've got a cartridge in there. Just unwrap the cartridge. There we go. A little plastic. Just a little warranty crap. Yeah. Hmm. It's not bad. It's actually kind of cool because they got a little window for the barcode. Well thought out. And they have a lot, uh, no write tab, which I'm sure is only read by this thing and doesn't do anything to the drive itself. Oh good, there are screws on this, so hopefully we can just open this up. But let's see what happens when we put this cartridge in. Ooh, green light. Let's see what Mac OS says. Well, it does see the drive and it see well, sees everything. It's detecting it as a USB device at five gigabits per second. I think it's time we open this up. Before ejecting the drive, I ran a couple benchmarks after formatting it, and uh, yeah, it's actually pretty fast. It's not bad at all for a you know spinning drive. Obviously, the random uh, read and write is terrible, but that's normal with any mechanical drive. Uh, I'm gonna try ejecting it now and see if it does like an auto eject. Uh, let me see if this button does anything. Okay, it's turned angry. And it's not sending an eject signal to macOS, so let's just try ejecting it through macOS. Cool. And now it's doing this alternating blink. Okay. Neat. <laughs> oh, I just I just realized that the actual the read write uh, LED is actually incorporated into the cartridge. A little unusual. Oh, let's get this unplugged out of the way and let me get my light on all right so there's a tiny torx bit on this Let's see if we can find the right one too small With any luck these is this is the last time you'll see these crappy multi screwdriver bits on my channel, aside from videos I've already recorded, because I've ordered my super expensive deluxe Wea kit. Although I still have so many damn videos I haven't edited that they will no doubt be in the. Uh, these guys will no doubt be in a lot more to come. But at least the new ones won't have them. These things are pretty terrible. And they're already disintegrating, as you can see. <laughs> just like corroding just from being in the air. They're just crappy ones from Amazon. These are uh, self tapping plastic, or self tapping screws for plastic, I should say. Now, the question is is there one underneath the cartridge label? doesn't shred up the label. Cool. On the bottom we've got venting for airflow and a light pipe. So the uh, cartridge light is not actually on the cartridge. It's just a light pipe running to the front. A little weird. 
and this is a rubberized uh, little support thing for this. Alright, here we go. Take these guys off. Yeah, this is this is what makes it rugged, according to them. This little shock dampening thing. This is in a lot of laptops too. Similar designs. And we have a Toshiba MQ01ABD050. Okay, manufactured 2013. And standard hard drive. It's interesting that it uses the advanced format. Advanced format is uh, kind of a requirement for newer hard drives. Uh, it dates back, from, you know since the early days of hard drives where uh, a hard drive is divided up into sectors and each sector can only contain uh, you, you have to write them sec sectors at a time and uh, they've been 512 bytes for years and years and years like decades and they finally realized that well when you have a huge hard drive one chances are you're not using a million teeny tiny files so what happens is you waste a lot of information for all that sector information and keeping track of the sectors becomes really really hard to do because you start dealing with huge numbers to deal with just the inventory of all the sectors on the drive so advanced format uses a four kilobyte format where each sector is 4k now, if you were dealing with a situation where you had a million little dry, uh, little files, it would actually waste space because one file can occupy a sector. So if you had a 1K file, 3K of it is unused. So, you know, it's a trade-off, but the reality is on modern drives and modern computing uses, most files are way bigger than 4K. So it's not such a big deal. I just noticed there's a little tab here. I'm not really sure what this is doing. It's not for grounding. It's not hooked up to anything. Weird. I've done some more research, and by that I mean fooling around, and I've determined that this is a lot more evil than it looks. First of all, taking the drive out and hooking it up to your computer results in an unformatted drive. And in addition to that, disk copy, or sorry, disk utility, couldn't actually format the drive. It was, it was just coming up with an error each time. And secondly, this just random hard drive, uh, 40 gig? Yeah, 40 gig hard drive from, you know, whatever, put it, when put into the cartridge, shows up as a yellow marker. Now, I don't know if that means it's unformatted and you could format it, but I'm starting to suspect that this, in fact, uses some kind of custom firmware and prevents you from using any old drive in it. Meaning you can't go and buy, uh, I think the smallest capacity is like 160 gig. Can't go and buy one of those and put in a much larger drive. So, that is pretty damn evil. And I don't like them for that. And let's see how this... Uh, shock dampening system works. These little um, nubs stick out and are what actually hold the drive in place. They're kind of a pain to get back in. Um, they're what actually, they work like little stilts almost and hold everything away from the, hold the hard drive away from the actual outside of the case. And let's just see if we can get this stupid tab in the right place. There we go. Get the screws ready. I've ordered, or well, I won another 500 gig drive or cartridge from eBay. This unit was $90 with the cartridge. Uh, it was actually brand new. Um, I don't know what the retail price of these things were. I mean, I think they still make them. And it's not cheap since it's designed for enterprise. And I figured 90 bucks, what the hell. It's one of the more expensive things I've bought to, you know, out of curiosity. But I figured it was kind of cool.
I might be able to use this for something. Alright, put our nice little sticker back on. Good as new. Okay, let's try and get into this drive. Taking a look at this, it looks like the way to get in it is to peel up these corners to get to these screws. See if we can do this with minimal damage to this rubber. Just because it's kind of annoying to fix this sort of thing. It's just a, a double-sided tape on each, each uh, rubber piece. Ah, I see the case coming apart already. I don't know about this screw. I'll keep that. It's a different bit. It's a Torx bit. So, I'll keep that for now. I don't want that breaking anything. Three. Four. something okay there's more screws in there oh that's the Torx bit is it this size? nope need a smaller one oh, that's very small what is it? it's a T5 Pretty tiny. These are self tapping as well. I'm <laughs> feeling these rubber feet are going to be in rough shape at the end of this. There we go. Nice powder coated uh, metal exterior. It's quite rugged actually. Here's the mechanism. Okay, so there is a manual emergency eject. You can see there's a little pinhole here. And that should force this out. Hmm, maybe it doesn't. Maybe it's uh Huh, that's weird. Is it, there's a pin here. See, it's pushing, when you push this, it does actually try and force the drive out. Maybe I just can't put enough force on it by holding it like that. There's a little metal tab here, like a spring to keep it all aligned properly. And oh, here's the uh, action again. You can see how the little door opens up. And then we have a connection made. There's a little sense pin here for the lock and it clips in and yeah that's that needs a lot of force to push out <laughs> interesting so let me try to get there see if you if i'm pushing on it it does come out kind of easily oh there's more guide tabs on the side there's little spring things so about this part how can we get this off without breaking everything. Well, I think I do have to take out this one. Okay. The only thing holding on is the fan power connector. Perfect. So there's a teeny tiny fan there. Let me see if I could get this off, see what company it is. Just one nut and screw on each side. Here's the fan, very tiny, pretty cheap feeling. Made in China, it's the Minbia, Minbia Motor Manufacturing Corporation. 
I'm sure it's quality. Case just has this metal shield for the USB 3 connector and not much else. That's where the locking tab is. And that's about it. Here's the underside of the controller board. You can see a big DC motor and so uh, switch mode power supply, some optional chips and flux residue. There's a four pin connector running to the front which controls the multicolor LED and the switch. Here's the PCB mount LED that connects to the light pipe in this thing. So that's where you're getting the access light and I can see two two screws on this so let's see if we can just pop this off these are all self tapping as well no surprise it's all attached to plastic so it doesn't surprise me at all Yeah, there's something holding on to it. Not quite sure what yet. I can see down into it and it's just got openings for like capacitors and stuff, so I assume there's nothing I need to disconnect in there. So as for this, this looks like it's like a screw almost, like these things. Hang on, let me fight with this for a bit. Well, I'm just an idiot. There was a screw here and it just looked different because it was flat. It looked like it was almost like a rivet, not a screw. So taking that out, unhooked this and see what we can... Okay, so the gearing is all hooked up there, not falling apart. That's good. I don't know what is going on outside, but there seems to be a lot of fire trucks or something down the street. Here's the gearing mechanism. You can see when you spin this, rotates out. And there's a little piece of metal here. I'm not sure if that's for weight or for positional sensing. I guess we'll figure that out in a minute. I don't see anything that would detect it on this board. Well, either way, we've got a Texas Instruments based USB controller I presume with a clock crystal and not too much stuff on here huge fuse not bad surface mount and the motor shaft pokes through here it's just a tiny DC motor with who makes it eh, I don't know who that is doesn't really say too much on it other than made in China. There's also this little uh, rocker switch for whether or not the lock tab is engaged. And not much else. It looks like it's probably just like a little motor driver and an EEPROM and that's about it. Uh, I don't think there were any firmware, firmware updates available for this thing that I saw so yeah. I guess it's a fairly simple thing. It is weird that it's uh, obviously not conveying a standard hard drive interface to the drive because, I mean, I'm sure it's a normal serial ATA connection, but the actual data written to the drive is in some weird format because it's not showing up in the computer. So it leads me to suspect that it's writing it in like, you know, like like a RAID would, where it's just raw data to it. But the controller is very minimal. I mean, it doesn't look like there's a proper like RAID controller in here. That thing just looks like a normal USB 3 interface controller chip. So very unusual. They make internal drives, which have a USB 3 interface as well, and they do make a serial ATA version. So is the serial ATA version a straight paths through, or is it also interfering with the data on the drive in some way to make it its own proprietary nonsense? Not quite sure. Uh, let me see if I can get this back together. I got everything back together and it seems to be working okay. It shows up on my computer, which is funny considering the bare drive wouldn't. So yeah, clearly BS going on in there.
fancy. Uh, it actually does really sound like an old Psychot Quest drive when it does that. But, yep. I am rather disappointed with this thing. It had the potential to be a very interesting drive uh, for, you know, home backup. Since you can get these fairly cheap, you know, under 100 bucks, you can get a bare drive for like 45, 50 bucks easily. So I figured that would be kind of cool to have, a, you know, a simple, rugged backup solution for home people. You know, you just pop the drive in here, pop it in your fire safe, take it to your neighbors, whatever. And, uh, you know, just a simple oh, cat fur in here already. I'm sure that's going to be good for the uh, electronics. Uh, you know, just a simple, relatively cheap hard drive system for backup, and most people don't need that much data. I mean, you can get two terabyte cartridges for this thing, and, I, you know, I, I haven't really seen any of them on eBay. I've seen the one terabytes, but the fact that they use this proprietary bullshit means you can't just go and buy the cheap ones or any size and pop out the drive, put in a two terabyte and it's fast like this is you know full USB speed you know all the benchmarks showed that this thing was actually pretty nice but no they do this stupid proprietary nonsense with some kind of weird ass firmware making the thing practically useless I mean you can track down the 500 gig drives or cartridges fairly easily for about 30 bucks 30 to 40 bucks I've, I've found at least and that's not terrible like it's not like going out and buying like crazy enterprise stuff when it comes down to it it's just not worth the price I mean these 500 gig cartridges are just regular laptop drives in a fancy case what I do at home is I bought these Orico 3.5 inch hard drive protection boxes these are only like eight bucks or something and this is a rugged plastic shelled case with a foam insert where you just take a bare hard drive this is a th obviously a three and a half inch two terabyte drive nice foam for shock dampening and you just pop it in here and I just hook up hang on let me unhook it I'll hook it up to my nice cool gear th uh, USB 3 you know connect everything adapter serial ATA parallel ATA the two and a half inch one I just connect it to this thing so I take this out of the fire safe run my backups do whatever I need to do I mean I have a NAS that backs up everything but you know I put some you know like photos and stuff on this whereas the uh, the the fire safe or sorry the NAS backs up everything which is you know eight terabytes uh, this I just you know pop it out once in a while plug it in easy you don't need a special drive you don't need anything fancy you just need a bare hard drive that you've got spare most likely just sitting around and they're cheap and I was hoping this would be a, you know a more elegant solution where you're not dealing with bare drives and you have a real uh, cartridge system instead they screw you with this stupid proprietary format crap uh, one thing I did notice is the fan doesn't come on. It, it must be thermally controlled. It, I haven't had it come on even when the disc is in there. So it must be, you know, when it gets 30, 40 degrees Celsius, it kicks on. Oh, and uh, the system when running the 500 gig drive pulls about 4 watts, which isn't too bad. I mean, you know, it's not great, but it's not terrible considering all the losses from the switch mode power supplies and stuff. So... Yeah, in the end, this thing's not very uh, useful for me. I may just stick the whole system back up on eBay with the two cartridges, get my money back, hopefully. But 